In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Nissi 58mm close-up lens filter. Hello, my name's Stuart Wood and welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Nissi 58mm close-up lens filter. This is basically a magnifying glass for your lens. Now Nissi were kind enough to send me one of these over for uh, me to review, but they was also kind enough to send a second one, which I can give away to you, my subscribers. So if you want to have a chance at winning this Nissi close-up lens filter, then what you need to do is you need to be subscribed to the channel, head over to my Instagram, link down below there, subscribe to my Instagram, and then drop your Instagram handle in the comments below on this YouTube video and you could be in with a chance to win one of these Nissi close-up filters. I want to thank Nissi for giving away one of these to my subscribers. So first of all, we need to do a re-unboxing. I have already unboxed this once, um, but I forgot to press auto-focus on the camera, so it didn't really work. <laughs> Let's take a look what you get in this box. Now, this is the smaller of the um, filters. There is a larger one, cost a little bit more. So this one is the small one. Okay, so in here, there's a little instruction manual in there. We're not going to bother with that because I already have used it. But we have the Nissi filter, which comes in a nice case. That is a really nice touch. I like it when these accessories for your Makotov come in their own little case to keep the dirt away. And we also have some step-up rings. We have a 49 to 58 step-up ring. We also have a 52 to 58. They also have separate step-up rings, which we are going to be using that in a minute. But let's just take a look at this filter first. So this particular one is a five diapola magnifying glass. Now that doesn't equate to a five times macro. In fact, uh, the magnification on these filters all depends on your focal length of your lens. Now, typically these filters are aimed towards users that have a 70 to 300 millimeter lens. I don't have that here. I only have my 100mm lens, but we are going to put it onto there. But generally, the longer your focal length, the more magnification you are going to get out of this little device. Now, this device is well built. It's absolutely solid. It looks like it's uh, made out of metal. So the lens is of high quality. So let's put these aside for one moment. So there are a couple of reasons why you would have one of these filters. The first one is if you're not a macro photographer, and you have a 70 to 300 millimeter lens. Now, unfortunately, I can't use my Tamron lens because it's um, not working. But basically, if I wasn't a macro photographer, I could place this filter onto the front of that lens and it would give me a nice magnification, uh, roughly about one to one. Again, I can't test that because my lens doesn't work. The next reason you might want one is if you have a setup like this, which is my 100 millimeter lens. Pop that filter onto the front of there, we're getting about half times uh, more magnification. That's 0.5 magnification. So instead of it being a one to one, it'd be a roughly a 1.5 magnification lens. So it gives us that little bit of extra reach that you might want. Or if you have a setup like this one here, where you have the uh, a crop sensor camera, you're a starter, so you have the extension tubes and a nifty 50. Plonk down to there, it will give you some extra reach in the magnification department. So they sent me a 67mm to 58mm uh, step down ring so that I could fit it onto my Canon 100mm lens. And you might be asking to yourself, why am I using the Canon 100mm lens? Well, that's because my lower 100mm lens is broken. So I might be using that in this video. That's going to get sent back to Laura and I will keep you posted on how they handle that situation of receiving a faulty product and having it back and I will update you on that. So I have already previously tested this again. On both of those setups it gives me about uh, 0.5 magnification, it's just that little bit of extra reach. But what we want to do is I want to take it on a practical run now. So this is an unboxing and first impression. We're going to take this out now. We're going to photograph a jumping spider and see exactly what benefits we can get out of this filter. So do you remember our new jumping spider? We're going to get her out now. I think it's a her, I'm not too sure, but I'm going to get that spider out because this spider is roughly the same size as an adult female zebra spider from the UK. So it's a typical 
case situation of uh, you got a small spider, you want to photograph it, but you can't get close enough with your standard equipment. So we're going to do that now. I keep calling it her because she's got a big back end. Um, typically with most spiders, the females have large butts on them. So we're going to do this now. I have a standard speed light on here. We have the Canon 100mm on my full frame EOS R. Okay, so apart from a non-macro photographer wanting to put it onto his zoom lens to get some macro photography, that's case number one, which is probably the most popular case for this type of lens. The next typical case would be a macro photographer who's got the 100mm but needs that little extra reach. So I'm going to put this to one to one now and I'm going to take a picture of the spider. These are not going to be the best pictures in the world, okay, so bear with me. They are just literally for me to test out this filter. So she wouldn't keep still for this shoot. So here's a trick for you if you want to get a picture of a jumping spider is just give it some food. Because when they're eating, they're preoccupied with, you know, eating. So now I'll give her a little bit of food. Might seem a bit morbid, but now we can test out this uh, filter. So I'm going to take a shot now at one-to-one -one with my camera lens on my EOS R. Okay, so let's place the Nissi close-up filter on and see just how much more magnification we can get. So instead of buying a new lens like the Canon MP65mm lens, we can just pop on one of these close-up filters and get a little bit more magnification. Of course, you will lose working distance because the more magnification you get, the closer you're getting to your subject. For something as tiny as that, pack into your bag, it's quite a useful piece of kit to carry around. So there we go, you can see you can get a lot closer. So initial thoughts is, um, when I've got the filter on my lens, for the EVF it's very soft, it's got that 70s porn vibe going on. The images uh, themselves are sharp, so I'm not too sure what's going on with the EVF, but that in turn is making my focus peaking uh, struggle to find where the sharp images are, so focusing is a lot harder with that lens on there. But, at a push, you can get a lot closer using that Nissi filter. So another scenario that we have for this close-up filter is if you are a beginner macro photographer and you don't have a macro lens, and all you have is the Nifty 50 with extension tubes, then for a little under 60 pound, we can get a little bit more reach using this filter. So I'm gonna set this one up now. This is the 650D, this is a crop sensor camera. With the extension tubes on, this is 65 millimeter of extension tubes. I have the 50 mil on here set to close focusing. And we're going to use the pop-up flash I'm going to take a picture of the jumping spider with this setup and then again I'm going to put on the filter to see what that gives us. Like I said, it's not the best images in the world, just mostly just to test out this filter. I'm going to take the filter off now, plop that onto the front of this cannon. Onto the front of my 50mm and then let's take another picture. Works well, the image is sharp. Again, I'm not too sure what was going on with the focus peaking when we had this on the, uh, the ESR. So this close-up filter is a high quality filter. And all in all, I do like this close-up filter. If you want to pick yourself up a Nissi close-up filter or want more information, then check out the link in the description below to go to their website. If you're strapped for cash and you want that little extra reach, you can always put on one of these filters. Now there is another filter out there called the, uh, the Rhinox DCR250. I have one of them, so in a future video, I'm going to put the Nissi filter head to head with the Rhinox to see which one is best and which one you should buy. Subscribe if you're looking forward to that video. But for now, I shall leave that here. Again, if you want to win one of these close up filters courtesy of Nissi, then make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube channel. Head over to my Instagram channel, subscribe to there, and then drop your Instagram handle in the comments below this video for your chance to win this filter. I want to thank Nissi for doing that. So there you go, if you want that extra reach in macro, reach for a filter, slap it onto your lens to get that extra reach. Or indeed, if you haven't even got a macro lens and you've only got a 
70 to 200 that doesn't have a cactus inside it then you can have a go at doing some macro photography i want to thank nissi for sending over these filters we do have another nissi product to review in a couple of weeks that is a macro rail it's going to be interesting to use that since i've never actually used one of those yet my name's Sue Wood. I want to thank you for getting to the end of this video. And as always, I'll see you on the next video. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Nissi 58mm close-up filter lens. In this video, I want to thank Nissi for supporting this video. No. I want to thank Nissi for helping. No. Okay, so this is our typical scenario. I have my you can get a lot closer with that. Um, through the EVF, it's very soft. Got that purse. Again, if you want to win one of these close-up filters, courtesy of Nissi, then subscribe to the channel. Head over to my Instagram. Head over to my Instagram.